Hi fellow traders. I hope everybody had a great hump day. <clears throat> well, we got what we what we asked for. I felt a lot of the excitement and everything come back into the market today. You know, there were some dead spots. It was kind of slow, but there were some pretty good moves out there. But unfortunately, all I can say is I laid an egg today. Matter of fact, this whole thing should should be a freaking egg. There we go. That's what I laid today. One huge brown hen house egg. And I'll tell you why. In my mind, I don't, I don't even know where my mind was. I thought it was in the right place, but uh, evidently it wasn't. So <clears throat> because of that, I will um, stream live in the morning. You know, I don't want to teach you guys that was looking forward to this morning out of a day. So, you know, don't want to don't want to lay any more eggs tomorrow. I'll make sure that I, I screw my head on straight. Um, but I, I posted this this quote in in chat. And I wanted to share it <clears throat> with you guys too. You know, the hardest part about being a day trader is that you'll fail nine times for every success. And when you're starting out and you're trying to get through everything you need to get through, this is very true. You know, for every for every one success, you're gonna run into nine failures. And that, that seems like you know, the right number. Feels like the right number to me anyway. But, you know, this is where that stamina comes in that I talked about last week. You know, do you have, you know, do you have the uh, stamina to last? And those that don't make it, they don't have the stamina to last. And a lot of times they don't get the right um, guidance. You know, people aren't telling them the truth. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, that's reality. But you got to be able to accept failures and, and pick up the pieces and move on and get yourself back where you need to be. So today, you know, it all started with missing this huge move on TWLO. This was on my watch list. The, the bad thing about it, it was on my watch list, but I was looking at other stuff and I missed the breakout in this huge thing here. But what I did was I let this get me out of my game. I should have been watching this flag here. You know, and I'm sitting here, I mean, not watching it because I was watching it and I was talking about it and I pointed it out. And I didn't trade it. I should have been looking to trade this versus sitting here saying, oh, this is a nice flag. You know, this thing, you know, I, I don't even know where my head was. But missed the breakout, then missed the flat. This was the trade of the month, probably. Now, yeah, you know, last night uh, we did catch, I did catch the earnings play. And I was thumping my chest. I, I was, you know, real happy about that. But this stole all of that. Look at this move here. And the thing about it is I could have traded this with more size because this was in, in the day. I didn't have to be a two to one. I could have easily traded this with... Um, with two, 200, maybe 300 shares um, if I was stretching it. But just completely, completely laid, it, laid an egg on this and missed it. But that's not the bad thing. The bad thing is I did the same doggone thing on the earnings play for the day. And I'll, I'll show you that here at the end. But... You know, really started the day out bad. So this was the first egg I laid. Um, 
And then here, I was looking at KRS. Now, you know, I love stocks that gap down below that 52-week low. Here's a 52-week low right in here. We had this big gap down, and it was either going to sell off or get bought up. So I was ready either way. But this stock laid in there because it didn't do a damn thing. But take my money today. You can see I was look, I was ready to take it on the break of the five-minute opening range low. I took it. It dipped down a little bit, and then it immediately came back and stopped me out. Slapped me dead in my face. Um, You know, I took a little bit. I had a little bit too much slippage on it. I had 13 cent slippage. You know, my my stop was at 48.25. And, you know, that pop had 13 cent slippage on it. So, you know, that's fine. Okay. The stop was on SSR. I thought I was a man because I got a, I got a good entry. I got this hotkey that I programmed for my mouse. Just one click puts me, you know, right on the, the ask. And usually, you know, if a stock is kind of bouncing back and forth, you get filled. And, you know, it worked perfectly. But the darn trade didn't work. The reason why it worked perfectly was because the stock was trying to go back. But that was that. Um, took that, and, and this really never set up. It never really gave any good moves later on in the day. Didn't really do anything. So I took that hit. So I was moving on to Z. Z, pretty much the identical daily chart. Fifty-two week. Here's a 52-week low up here. Had a huge gap down. And this one actually had a great opening range breakdown. Really nice. And so I waited. And I felt, okay, let me, you know, get this. So I waited. We never did break down here. We pulled back. Got a little bit here. So I said, I'm going to wait for the pullback. And this is where my little hotkey bit me. Because I moved the mouse, it hit against the keyboard, clicked my little button, and that was it. So the thing works. I just need to move it somewhere so that I don't accidentally get in. But as long as we were below all of this, I was okay with it. So, you know, we were hanging below the 20. And I'm like, okay, we made a lower, a higher low here, but we're struggling to push the 20. I might as well leave it and, you know, see what we're going to do with it. And it turned around and stopped me out. And so I was watching this at lunch. You know, I told you guys if I left, I'll, I'll be watching this. And it pushed up. And now on my... Let me show you. I got to show you my thinkorswim chart for you to understand. All right. On my thinkorswim charts, I have the VWAP. And then we have an upper and lower deviation band. Okay. I pay more attention to this than I do to VWAP, honestly. Because these bands typically tell me the range that this stock's going to trade in. Now, obviously, when we get volume coming in, like right in here, the bands open up a little bit and that tells me we got volatility coming in and we may make another move. So what I was looking at over here was this was just a squeeze. It got squeezed up. And once we got outside this band, I said, I'm going to short it because we're going to come back. And that's exactly what I did. Once we got outside of this, I knew we were coming back, um, and I was expecting this to continue down. But unfortunately, I was I was actually at the doctor, and I had to take it off a little bit too early. But here's the first move. 
and I ended up taking it off here because it felt like we were getting ready to pop again. And then I got back in once we pulled back through this. And here's where I had to get out. I probably could have left it on, but I didn't didn't want to and I didn't have time to put my orders and stuff in. And I missed the sweetest move. You know, so today was just a day of big misses for me. You know, this move could have put me back green on the day. You know, instead I ended up um, down 116.08. But this could have easily, easily put me back green on the day. And I would have been just moving. But this was just one of those days where I was just not in the right place. But because I was able to manage and not get out of hand, I was able to bring this back to a respectable, you know, level. I ended the day at a respectable level. Losing $116 is no big deal. I mean, I had a, a killer day yesterday. You know, this is just part of the game. But, you know, I'm more so upset with how out of touch and out of tune I was today. I, I was more upset with that than, than anything else. All right, so uh, TRIP, this was the earnings play that I was looking at. Now, as I was researching this last night, I looked at Trivago and Expedia, you know, other similar companies, other travel companies. And I wanted to see what did they, did they pop on earnings? Did they go up on earnings? Did they beat earnings? And, and all of them did. So, you know, my first thought was this was going to be a long. You know, but as I started looking at the chart, and I was talking about this in chat today, I'm looking at this chart, and I'm like, you know what? This is a classic case. To me, it looks like a classic case of them running this up and then selling it off. And, you know, at, on earnings. And so I was looking, I was looking short, even though technically and fundamentally, this was going to, this would be a long, I was just had in my mind that these guys are playing games and this, even though it looks like a long, they probably are going to let, going to tank it and had all that in my mind and it took me out of my game on that because all the whole afternoon instead of me saying hey this is really setting up to the long side just like you know i originally thought it would be i'm just waiting for it to put in a lower low and start creeping down so i can short it now, thankfully, it never set up because it kept making higher highs, albeit ever so slightly. We was we were just grinding up. So there was just no entry on this to the short side. But I wish I had talked myself into it today, into just sticking with what you know, trusting your judgment, because... You know, you do know a little bit about what you're doing and trade it. And this would have been another monster trade. So, you know, this is why I said I laid multiple eggs. The market was there. It gave me all of these freaking opportunities. And I just <laughs> laid that big egg. So I guess I'm going to have to wear it around on my head. Just print it out and glue it to my face so everybody can know exactly, you know, how stupid I was today. But it was, you know, it was just bad. But um, that's it. Oh, one thing I want to, to share with you guys. You know, I was reading this. Uh, Hold on. I was reading this today. This came out today. 
if you guys don't believe that these investment banks and these, these guys that have a lot of money at their disposal don't manipulate the markets, you know, here's proof. And, and people have even uh, Kramer said when he was a big fund manager that he how he manipulated the market. He he said just how he did it. You know, here's a guy, you know, he did precious metals, which is probably why I stayed away from them because it they look like they were being manipulated. You know, or if you haven't seen that movie, um, The Big Short, that shows you right there how the banks manipulate stuff. So it happens. You know, we just have, when we recognize it, we just have to be on our toes and either try to figure out what they're going to do or leave it alone. You know, move on. There's so much more out here for us that we can get into versus, you know, chasing stuff. Sometimes I get headstrong and I'm determined to trade something. I know I don't have no business trading, but, you know, luckily I learned how to gather myself up once I get out of control. But I just thought that was interesting. It was something that popped up. You know, right when I got ready to get on, on um, on the on the uh, uh on the net, the the internet. Gosh, I need I need to go to sleep now. But um, I will. Like I said, I will um, stream live in the morning. Because today, I, I just don't know where the hell I was. Um, but we'll do that uh, tomorrow. And um, don't forget, we still got those specials that's running through this week. If you want to take advantage of them, um, the link will be posted in the description of this video. So you guys have a great evening. And I will see you first thing in the morning.